This is the self preservation society. This is the self preservation or house. Self preservation society. Yeah. Drop your plates of meat. This is the Health Preservation Society. This is the Self Preservation Society. This is the Self Preservation Society. I can't help but smile hearing this song titled Get a Bloom and Move On, or also known as the Self Preservation Society. And that's even if I'm hearing my four year old and her dad run through it. Released just over 50 years ago, the 1969 British comedy caper film The Italian Job remains in our collective consciousness primarily because of its star power, iconic actor Michael Caine and three equally iconic mini cars. The plot is pretty straightforward. It's the planning and execution of a heist to steal gold from an armoured truck in Italy. Directed by Peter Collinson, the Italian job races by in under 100 minutes. I'm not old enough to have seen the film theatrically, but my mum and dad, while certainly not the world's greatest devotees to it, remember the indelible imagery of the mini cars and some of Michael Caine's great one-liners. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off! Along the way, we're treated to beautiful Italian scenery, spectacular pre-computer graphic stunt driving, and a succinct and highly memorable music score by American film composer and titan of the music industry, Quincy Jones. Hello, my name is Chris Malone, and the focus of this podcast well, I guess it's more of a droning monologue, really, is to provide a brief survey of the music of The Italian Job and its 50th anniversary soundtrack release on Quartet Records. Quincy Jones wrote his first film score some five years before The Italian Job was released. It was for the Holocaust drama titled The Porn Broker. For that score, Jones prepared a soundtrack album and released it on Mercury Records, a label for which he was then the vice president. In between The Porn Broker and The Italian Job, Jones had scored some 15 films. In doing so, he had proven himself as practiced, disciplined, and entirely capable. For this assignment, he even had the good fortune of sharing the exact birthday with star Michael Caine. So it was all meant to be. Whilst it might seem incongruous that an American write music for a quintessentially British film, Quincy Jones told Ben Mankiewicz in a 2014 interview that he was determined to make it sound like a Brit wrote it. In about 29 minutes if you're watching the film, or 28 minutes if you're listening to the original 1969 soundtrack album Assembly, Quincy Jones submits a pretty eclectic mashup of musical genres. He assimilates ideas from jazz music, from folk and classical. He channels the mood of John Barry on occasion, of pop standards of the era, and he even incorporates football chants. On paper, it makes no sense at all. In the film, it's the perfect accompaniment. And thanks to tight spotting and a brisk running time, no theme or mood overstays its welcome. The two songs that essentially bookend the story are particularly memorable. During the opening titles, a Lamborghini snakes its way through the picturesque Alpine region of Switzerland. 
the soundtrack is filled with the voice of Matt Munro singing the breezy ballad On Days Like These. On days like these when skies are blue and fields are green I look around and think about what might have been I first saw the film during TV broadcast, watching it with my dad. I was in my teens at the time and had been into James Bond in a big way for a few years. Dad suggested that the bloke singing was the same as From Russia With Love. He was right of course, and Munro was most famous at the time for having done the Academy Award winning Born Free for composer John Barry and lyricist Don Black in 1966. Coincidentally, Don Black also wrote the lyrics to On Days Like These, and he gives us this referential and reflective mood of someone yearning for another time, another place, and a conquest of yesteryear. The second song is the catchy Get a Bloomin' Move On that I referred to at the start of this podcast. This is a Whilst in London working on the film, Quincy Jones became fascinated with Cockney rhyming slang. The Cockney language originated from the East End of London as a coded way to obfuscate the real meaning of what was being said. Once again, Don Black steps up to perhaps an unusual challenge and fashions witty lyrics that incorporate and extend upon Cockney rhyming slang. It's a perfect song for this film and really helps elevate it immensely in terms of pacing, rhythm and humour. For the 50th anniversary of the film in 2019, Quartet Records released a remastered version of the original 28-minute stereo album on compact disc. As a bonus, the CD also includes the film versions of all the Quincy Jones composed cues. These were recorded at Olympic Sound Studios by the legendary Keith Grant and mixed to mono for the film. This means that listeners who always sought the film arrangement of On Days Like These with its echo drenched and more nostalgic vocal performance can finally have the chance to add it to their record collection. Astute listeners will also note the occasional different take, differently positioned edit, or different mix of material heard in the film versus the original album. On this album, you have the luxury to compare and contrast. The anniversary CD also includes the mixes made for the 7-inch single back in 1969 with a performance of On Days Like These by Lou Reisner. The music on this CD has been mastered from elements courtesy of Paramount Pictures and the Universal Music Group. The beautiful artwork by Nacho Gavantes spotlights the true stars of the film that I keep talking about, Michael Caine and the three minis. And 20 pages of stills and comprehensive notes from Jeff Bond take a deep dive into the production. Get your skates on, mate. Get your skates on, mate. No bib around your Gregory Peck today. Aye. Drop your plates of meat right, right upon the seat. This is a house fashion society. Well done. High five. So, why not get your skates on, mate, and pick up the Italian Job 50th Anniversary Soundtrack CD. You'll find it at quartetrecords.com. You'll also find it at any of the world's fine soundtrack retailers, including Intrada and Screen Archives, or on Amazon. This is the Self-Preservation Society. The Self-Preservation Society.
Well, that's just about it for today. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll join me next time to discuss another classic soundtrack.